Hi everyone, my name is Erik Harkonen and on behalf of my collaborators I'd like to present our work Disentangling Random and Cyclic Effects in Time-Lapse Sequences. In this work we're primarily interested in multi-year time lapses that have repeating day and year cycles. These are often captured by online webcams. Let's take a look at the typical properties of this kind of data. The webcams typically capture one frame every 30 minutes or so. And if these frames are played one after the other, we get the following result. Now, while these day scale time lapses are cool, we're often interested in changes that happen over longer periods of time. So if you want to, for example, visualize the changes over a whole year, we have to subsample the sequence. And if we do this subsampling naively, we get the following results. Beware, there are some flashing images ahead. As we can see, naive subsampling results in quite a messy result with lots of flickering in the video. This is because we have lots of entangled changes where the day cycle, year cycle and random weather all keep changing at the same time. We can be a bit more smart about this and for example, sample every frame at the same time of day, which gives us a slightly improved result, but the video is still quite flickery. So this is the kind of data that we have to work with. And the goals of this project are the following. We aim to improve the quality of the time lapse. We want to reduce or remove the flickering seen before. We want control of the output. We want to be able to change the weather, the time of day and the season independently of each other. And finally, we want some insight about our data. We want to understand and visualize the factors of variation present in our input sequence. And all of this boils down to disentanglement of these changes that happen at the same time in the inputs. Let's enumerate the kinds of changes we expect to see in our data. First, we have repeating changes, such as the day cycle where the sun moves in the sky, and the year cycle where the seasons keep changing over time. We also have non-repeating changes that still depend on time, so-called trends. We have continuous trends like this gradual growth of, it, of the tree on the left over several years, as well as discontinuous change. For example, the construction or renovation of buildings. In the bottom inset, we see a red building being painted white. And on the top, we see a new building being constructed in the background. Finally, we have non-deterministic changes that cannot be explained by the cyclic or trend parts alone. The weather is one source of randomness. Here we have four images captured at the same time of day on different years. We can see that at the end of March, the appearance of the frame can vary quite drastically. We also have random movements and occlusions in the data. We can, for example, have a person walking in front of the camera just as it's capturing a frame, or a spider web appearing in the frame temporarily. All of this is to say that the raw time-lapse data is quite messy and not that nice to look at on its own. And it contains lots of changes that are entangled that happen at the same time. But also we have lots of redundancy in our data. And maybe we can leverage these properties to generate something that's nicer to look at. Our problem is formulated as follows. We have input specifications that decide what kind of Im image we want to generate. Next, we have a function f that takes these specifications and produces an output image. And we want the output image to have the following properties. We want it to be controllable. We want to be able to change different properties of the image independently of each other. We want our image to be temporally stable, since we're interested in creating uh, long time-lapse sequences that don't flicker, we want them to have this property. And finally, we want our outputs to be high quality and to resemble the input sequence as much as possible. An immediate thought might be to use regression models to solve this problem, whereby an input timestamp t and a regression model like a convolutional neural network is used to predict the output image. But this doesn't really work for a few reasons. First, this setup encourages memorization, which is incompatible with the independent control that we want of the output. But more fundamentally, due to the randomness of our inputs, subsequent frames can look quite different, and there's not really a smooth mapping from the input to the output. And given limited uh, model capacity, this most likely results in blurry outputs. And finally, regression models are not really suitable for producing a distribution of plausible outputs given a single input time, which is something we want of our model. 
Instead, our chosen method looks like the following. As our specification, we take a decomposed time. This means specifying the year, which controls trends like the growth of trees and the existence of buildings. We also specify the date to control seasonal appearance, as well as the time of day for overall lighting conditions. Finally, we want to be able to specify the random conditions of the image, like the current weather. We use a conditional generative model as our function f, since they are suitable for modeling the distributions of outputs that we're interested in producing. And we believe we're the first to study this problem in this specific setting. Specifically, we use generative adversarial networks, or GANs, as our generative models, since they're known to be good representation learners that produce high quality outputs. We train one GAN per input sequence to specify its behavior to the data in question. Our model is based on the architecture StyleGAN2, which has been quite popular recently. Let's go through the main properties of this model. On the left, in the so-called mapping network, we sample a vector of random number z, called the latent vector, from a normal distribution. These random numbers specify the overall appearance of the image. The latent vector z is, is uh, fed through a sequence of layers to produce a secondary latent vector or intermediate latent vector w, which has better disentanglement properties. This vector w is then fed to every layer of the synthesis network that produces the actual output image. For example, on the first layer, w is mapped through an affine mapping to produce a style vector s. This is the style in style GAN. And this vector is then used to control the convolution operation on this layer. Finally, we have spatial noise maps that produce spatially localized random variation to the image. We extend StyleGAN2 by adding a custom conditioning mechanism. We take an input timestamp t and produce a stack of explicitly repeating sine-cosine pairs evaluated at t, as well as a linear component to model the non-repeating trends in the data. All of these parts can then be independently manipulated after training to change only certain aspects of the image. The frequencies of our repeating signals exactly match the day cycle and the year cycle in the data. After we've produced this stack or conditioning information C, it is again fed to every layer of the synthesis network and mapped through a linear mapping to produce a vector of scales. And this vector of scales is multiplied pointwise with the style vector from before to produce a scaled style S prime. And the scaled style then manipulates or controls the convolution operation like before. We explore a few other conditional mechanisms in the paper, but the one presented here was the best performing. Let's take a look at the changes each of our inputs has on the output. Our starting point here is early summer at noon in Frankfurt, Germany. When we change the time of day input, we can see the image changing from daytime to nighttime and the sun moving the sky accordingly. Also interesting is the fact that some lights that are on in early evening in the image can be seen turning off later during the night. The time of year input changes the appearance of trees and other aspects of the image. So here in the inset, we see, we see green trees in summer that turn orange and brown as the seasons uh, advance. We can also see some clouds appearing behind the skyscrapers in the sky. This uh, reflects the biases of our input data. If, for example, there are more clouds generally in fall, we can see that re reflected in the image as well. The trend input controls non-repeating changes like we've seen before. In the bottom inset, we can see the house being painted white again and in the top, we can see a new building being constructed, while all other aspects of the image stay unchanged. Finally, the latent vector or defines the overall uh, weather conditions and other random aspects of the image. And by interpolating from a clear latent vector to one that depicts rain, we can see the weather smoothly changing in the image. Or we can interpolate to a, a partly cloudy weather. 
finally, the noise map produces spatially localized random variation in the image, here seen as slight movement and flickering in the clouds in the sky. An interesting thing we can do with our models is to visualize the changes in the image spatially caused by different inputs. In other words, we can compute the variance of every pixel with respect to all of the inputs that we have. Here we visualize the variance of the year cycle for all pixels, and we can see the trees on the right being highlighted as they change drastically uh, with the year cycle. The day variance uh, can be seen in the sky, perhaps um, as expected, but we also see the bottom bridge being highlighted. And this is due to strong lights on the bridge that turn on during nighttime. The trend input highlights the building that we saw repainted before, but it also highlights the top bridge. This is due to new lights being installed halfway through the time lapse. So when controlling the trend input for a night frame, we can see these stronger lights appear and disappear. Due to our more stable and controllable models, we can perform interesting visualizations that wouldn't be possible with the input sequence alone. Here, for example, we have an image where every column gets a different conditioning value for the year cycle. So we can see spring on the left of the image, summer in the middle, fall on the right side, and then um, at the far right we see winter conditions. And we can also animate this over time. So here we can create an interesting visualization where the seasons appear to be shifting spatially across the image. Right, so far we've seen that our technique enables controllable and flicker-free time lapses. How does this compare with previous work? While we believe we're the first to study the disentanglement of time lapses, time lapse stabilization has been studied before. Here we see the technique of Martin Brolla and colleagues from 2015. That for, that's an optimization based technique that minimizes L1 or L2 distances between subsequent frames optimized independently per pixel. First, let's look at the input sequence where we can see uh, plants growing on a table and the weather conditions changing at the same time from cloudy weather to sunny weather, causing flickering in the sequence. The technique my Martin Brolla and colleagues uh, certainly removes the distracting flickering we've see, we saw before, but it also produces quite blurry or fuzzy results due to all the random uh, movement changes in the leaves. So as it attempts to blur out changes, it also blurs out the geometry at the same time. And in contrast, our technique also produces smooth plant growth while keeping the weather conditions stable. But in contrast to the previous technique, all the individual frames that we produce look like plausible inputs from our input sequence. And additionally, we also have control over weather and other aspects of the image. Let's recap. By taking chaotic real-world time-lapse data, and using it to train a conditional GAN with a custom conditioning mechanism, we can produce stable and controllable output time lapses and visualize the data in ways that would not be possible with the input images alone. However, there are a few remaining challenges that are not covered by this presentation. First, we perform alignment as a pre-processing step, which is time-consuming and error-prone, and it would be nice to learn the alignment as part of the training process. Next, due to the trend inputs, the model has the means to simply memorize the input sequence, and we discuss different ways to prevent this in the paper. While the image quality is decent, it still suffers from typical GAN-like artifacts, and evaluating other generated architectures or generated models, such as the popular diffusion models, might improve the outputs. And finally, for future work, it might be interesting to pre-train on a collection of input sequences and perform few shot fine tuning on a sequence of interest. Thanks for watching. Our pre trained models and code are available online.